Hey y'all, how you doing? It's your boy Smitty here, um, up for another video. Uh, if you like what you see, make sure you hit that like button. You know, it's that button that's right down there on the in the corner. There's a subscribe button there too. Smack that dude. Anyway, it, it helps helps the channel out a bunch. Helps me to grow. Um, thank you for being a subscriber. For all you all that are here. And uh, for all that you watch, uh, it shows that about 94% of you don't subscribe. So, man, if I got every one of y'all that watched it to subscribe, I'd be on cloud nine. But yeah, it is what it is. I appreciate you nonetheless. Uh, anyway, today we've got our uh, transmission our 4L60E that we're going to use for Scarlet. And, uh, you know, I thought there was more in this thing, but as you can see, it's pretty much an empty case. It's, <laughs> it's got the low reverse piston in it, but all the guts are gone. Now, I don't know how I got this thing. I don't remember how I got it. It's I've had it for years just been sitting around my house and I finally got a use for it. But there are some things we've got to tear down and then uh, we'll get the case cleaned up and start putting her together. So let me uh, get you set up on a on the stand here and we will get going. So hang tight. All right, before I get you set up on the stand, there's a couple things, or a couple things I want to point out. <clears throat> All right, for one, this was the, the pre-air of the Quick Connects. They've got the old uh, inverted flare fitting. This does still have the servo in it. We'll get it out and see what's in there. Um, the... Get this dude flipped here. Okay, the 4L60E's used uh, three different plugs. Uh, you notice this one's tan, and it's got a gray collar. The later model ones were green, and I'm saying like when they started using pulse width modulated torque converters in 96, I think it was, 95 or 96, uh, the plug is green with a gray collar. And then in 2007, when they made another update, that is, that is uh, tan again, but the collar on the outside is black. And the difference on that year is 2007, they started using input speed sensors, so they had to, had to add three pins to the connector. So that's what that deal is there. Now I'm assuming this came out of a F car, but I'm not really sure. I mean, it's got the bosses on it, but I'm not sure that it actually came out of an F car because usually on the torque arm mount, there'll be another bolt hole up here. So I'm not sure what this came out of, but that's not a big deal because we can change the, uh, the tail shaft. All right, the other thing I want to point out is this year does have a electronic speedometer. Now this is the big one, so more than likely, when I get it out, uh, it will have a gear on the end of it, and then instead of a reluctor. That was common on, on the early models, so when we get it out, I'll show you what I mean. And those are pretty easy, you can change the gears on them either way to compensate for your gear ratio of the car. Kind of a neat setup, but here's the problem. The uh, 87 were still cable operated um, cluster. And I don't particularly like the newer clusters, the 91, I think 90 or 91, when they changed the cluster on them, they went to electronic. And I'm not fond of those clusters. I like the old round gauges. So I think I may have a solution for that. So it, it has to do with what my plans are in coming. I don't want to give you too much information. That'll spoil it. So, all right, here we go. All right.
need a bigger pair of pliers. Don't know if either one of these will do it or not, but we're gonna try it. Oh yeah, these will work. Come on, get out of there. All right. Well, we know it's not out of a Corvette. This has not got a Corvette servo on it. Just a standard 3-4. Or... Got some grease in the bottom of it. Interesting. Man, that smells like tarnish. Anyway, go ahead and pull our. Well, I guess the low reverse clutches are in it too. They're just dried. They're. Now well, that one's about coming apart, but who knows? They're pretty old. You need to take that. Gotta take the output shaft off for sure. So let's get that dude off. Oh, I'm mistaken. This must be a uh, a newer one than that. This has got the actual reluctor on the end of it. And you can tell it's got a bunch of fuzz on it. That means something failed in the transmission. So, I stand corrected. All right, here's something I want you to see. This has got an oil sleeve on it. And that oil sleeve is there for a purpose. Can you even see that? Hell no. Let's try that. This one's got an oil sleeve on it. This oil sleeve is there to keep the oil from wicking through past the splines out the drive shaft, the end of the drive shaft. If you don't put these back on with a two-wheel drive, uh, it'll leak. Guaranteed it'll leak. So make sure to replace this. And it is a one-time use piece. Uh, at least that's what GM tells you. And then this shaft will come out the back because it's got the reluctor on it here. So these reluctors can be pressed on and off. So don't fret if it's uh, damaged. All right, let's flip this dude over. Guess I could have gone the other way with that. That's all right. Yeah, it's just tarnishing the bottom of that. All right, if you notice something missing, this year doesn't have a torque converter pulse width modulator valve. So you don't, it's just an on off, which is fine for the application that I want it for. I'd rather it be on and off anyway. Uh, it does have a valve in it for the, for the pressure regulator. If you notice this is, they're not pressure regulator, uh, pressure control solenoid. And if you notice this is the old style pressure regulator where the, the tip, the uh, plug is on the back of it like that. So, uh, 
standard shift solenoids that are the same on all of them. You got your uh, your uh, position switch, not position switch. It actually tells the ECM what gear it's in. It's a pillow switch, basically. It's got like little pillows on the bottom side. This harness is pretty much trashed, but I mean, you can get replacement harnesses, so that's the route we're going to go with that. We will probably have to update the uh, one two accumulator because this looks like this might be an old design um, so that's all right we've got we've still got a donor that we can use parts of so let's get the rest of this thing this valve body off This one actually has metal retainers that actually hold the harness in place. Where the late model ones just, they wrap around the bolt. These actually got retainers that hold it in. So you got to take these two bolts out to be able to get the harness up. And remember what I said about the 8 millimeter headed bolts. They're the same on all of them. These three bolts are 8 millimeter head. There's one up there too. This one, the pillow switch just came apart. See, this is the first design too. The second design, they actually had a, the whole plate covered up this this switch. So, uh, I don't know that the second design is available for this year, but we'll look. Oh, those dudes stick on there pretty good. Yeah, see, it even pulled this one clean out. So that's junk. Well, this is interesting. Apparently, somebody had put this together and didn't finish it. The check balls are still sitting in grease. Huh. Wonder why that is. Kind of makes me leery now. This core may not be any good. Look at how far sunk down that piston is. I wonder if they just left a spring out. You can put air on this hole right here and uh, blow that piston out of there. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> There was a spring there, but it's broken. And look at what it did to the piston. I mean, that piston is tore up from the floor up. It had uh, dual springs in it. But as you can see, there's pieces of the spring. Interesting. Yeah, this housing's tore up anyway. If you look in there, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me get a light. If 
you look inside there, well that housing's even broke. There's a hole down in there in the bottom. You see it? Oh, I'm an idiot. That's the freaking feed hole. But if you look in there, you can see, I'll try to keep the glare off for you, but the whole bottom of the housing's uh, tore up. That spring's been broke for a while. The second hole right there is beat up pretty good on the on the plate. Some guys will repair those. I prefer not to. I'll uh, probably just replace it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, fourth accumulator is still there and it's stuck down in there. Get you a better shot. If you notice also, this one's got a check ball here. They don't all have check balls there. But also notice this has got a plastic piston in it. If you go back with a piston like this, you're going to want to replace it with, a, with an aluminum one or a billet one. Or what I usually do is I buy the Sonics pinless ones, which eliminates the, the slop that you got in between the pin and this, and it doesn't crack. Now to get a hole, there's a hole right down there, if you can see in the shadow, and there you can see it, right down there. That's where you want to put your air and it'll blow the piston out of there. get you up a little higher there you go all right put your air down in that hole right there there you go that uh, pin is physically stuck in the there it goes It doesn't look cracked. I don't know why I'm yelling. And the pin wear is pretty minimal. Which is surprising. So anyway. Get this connector out of here. We're going to replace this anyway, so I'm not worried about damaging it. All right, only thing left, you get the band anchor here. Pull that dude out. Pull your linkage out here. All right, what you want to do, we're going to do this stuff before we take it to get it cleaned. Get that check ball out of there. If I had the, the stuff here. You want to polish the inside of this, not polish it, but you want to, you want to rough it up a little bit. Because otherwise the, the thing will bind in the... Uh, in the bore it'll chatter you want to do that with your three four or your two four band housing just scuff it up because the way the the seals are made they they're made to have fluid behind it um so i think uh that's almost it oh we need to get the the lower verse piston out all right um So to do that, we'll set up our mouse trap.
flip this around. That plate on there, put our spacer on. Washer and our wing nut. I don't know if I can do this one handed or not. All right, now that we got that there. Reach down in the bottom there and there'll be a snap ring right down there at the bottom. Oh, wow. I think I got it on the first, uh, first go. Almost. There it is. All right, got that out. Pull your puller out, pull your spring out, and your snap ring. Okay, you have to make sure your park pole, if you noticed, comes in down there at the bottom. You see it? You have to make sure to take your linkage out so your park pole is not there. And I'm going to do it. Tip to my air air gun. There it is. All right. The way you get this piston out, don't stand over the top of this thing while you're doing it. The way you get your piston out, right down there, this hole right here. Put air to that; it'll blow the piston out. Okay. Just like that. 
Just reach down there and grab your piston. There you go. Now they had to update for uh, 94. Look at that. It's starting to blow the seal out there. Um, there's an update for it, or you can use a later model piston, which is what I'm going to do. But that's all there is to it. All right, guys. So there you got it. That's our, our Scarlet's uh, transmission teardown, or going to be transmission teardown. Remember, I'll scuff those up before it goes into the tank to get cleaned to make sure it gets a good seal, but that's it. Um, we'll get parts ordered for it, uh, whatever I need, and we'll go from there. So if you like what you've seen, make sure to hit that like button down there at the bottom, and there's a subscribe one there too. Make sure to hit that. Anyway, hey, I appreciate you all a bunch. Uh, so until next video, take care of yourself, take care of each other. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.